everybody. Welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Flight. Just finished watching it. You know how we do it. I will give you my overall impressions and grade after reading the logistics about the movie. If you have not seen the movie and would like to, or want to shut off the video, there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development and any similar movies or major themes. So, Flight was released in 2012. It is rated R. It is a drama slash thriller starring Denzel Washington. It has a runtime of 2 hours and 18 minutes. Like I said, you can watch it for free on YouTube or with a regular subscription to Netflix. And everywhere else, it's listed for some for pay, pay to watch. It says, Commercial airline pilot Whit Whitaker, played by Denzel Washington, has a problem with drugs and alcohol, though so far he's managed to complete his flight safely. His luck runs out when a disastrous mechanical malfunction sends his plane hurtling toward the ground. Whip pulls off a miraculous crash landing that results in only six lives lost. Shaken to the core, Whip vows to get sober, but when the crash investigation exposes his addiction, he finds himself in an even worse situation. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, did $162 million at the box office. We do not have a budget number. 75% liked it on Google, 77% liked it on Rotten Tomatoes, and 7.3 out of 10 on IMVD. So overall, what did I think? I was intrigued. I didn't think it was anything super novel or super unique. I'm a fan of Denzel Washington as an actor. Uh, the plot moved along well. It was a little long, but again, just for this particular piece. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was entertaining. Um, nothing super novel, but again, fan of Denzel, and it was a decent drama slash thriller. So I'm going to give it a B- minus for entertaining, and I recommend it. So if you've not seen it, I'd like to, based off the introduction and my grade, you want to shut off the video now, there will be spoiler alerts. So the movie opens up with a, with a really a, a enjoyable fashion. You meet um, Katarina, who is uh, this uh, Latina lady, and so you get a nice full frontal naked, naked shot, which is solid. <laughs> but, but her and Whip are sleeping together, and so... They have to get. She's a. She's the flight attendant on his on his um, on his aircraft, and they have to get ready to go. They have a flight at nine in the morning. So after a long night of drinking and some uh, um, coitus, <laughs> they have to go into work. So they get in there. You meet another another flight attendant named Margaret. You meet the co-pilot Ken Evans. Uh, Whip and Ken have never flown together. Uh, Whip has already snorted some coke and he's already drinking some booze. And he uh, takes two or three of these little single shot serving vodka things and puts it in his coffee. And so they're doing the pre-flight checks. They're getting everything ready. Whip isn't really presenting as you know intoxicated in any way, even as just like acting. Um, but that's pretty much what's going on there. You also meet a, a girl named Nicole, who is played by the whoever plays the actress that plays Beth Dutton on. Um, uh, Yellowstone, Kelly Riley, she's de definitely recognized her from Yellowstone, um, but she is kind of like, you know, just a, diff a different character line, and she is, um, she's basically down and out, she's going to, she has a drug connect that's a, a porn producer, so she goes in there, they want to, uh, you know, have a, they, they're doing a, they're doing a, like a Greek mythology themed porn shoot, and they want uh, uh, Nicole to hop in the shoot, and she's like, no, I just want some drugs. So she gets some drugs and she tells the dealer that she's not going to um, use needles because um, she's had problems with addictions and she's going to overdose. But she goes back home and has a little kind of uh, struggle with the landlord and ends up shooting up the dope and overdosing. So she goes to the hospital. Um, I think this happened at kind of the same kind of timeline with the different characters. And so very quickly into the movie, um, once they take off, they're flying. They hit this really bad patch of turbulence. Whip takes the plane down to coast through the more stable air. Um, they get through the turbulence, and then they think they're in the clear. And then um, Whip is puts the plane on autopilot and is taking a nap. And so the um, the plane starts to do a nosedive. They're not sure why at this point, um, but Whip is able to you know snap out of it. Wakes up and he maneuvers the plane. Um, this modern day in 2012. I'm not sure where. Somewhere in somewhere in America, the United States. And so he snaps out of it. Um, they start, you know, going into a nosedive. They do different things like dump the fuel. The engine catches on fire, you know, more c catastrophes and malfunctions. And Whip makes the instinctual, intuitive decision to roll the air aircraft to somehow, you know, do something to slow down the descent. And he rolls it. 
and he's able to turn it back over and land it as safely as he could. Once they make impact, you know, you get a kind of a zone out scene where it's like uh, you, they're, they're not really playing, but the audio, you know, just making cinematography to a crash. Whip gets knocked out, Ken Evans gets knocked out, and the next kind of thing is Whip waking up in the uh, emergency room. And so Whip has a kind of a longtime friend and uh, fellow pilot, uh, Charlie Anderson, played by Bruce Greenwood. I recognized him not from anything super specific. I also recognized Tamara Tooney, who played Margaret, who was one of the flight attendants, but not 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 sure where from. But regardless, um, he wakes up in the hospital. He gets some briefing or some kind of communication with Charlie Anderson, and he's like, you know, the whatever the regulatory board for flight crashes and stuff are. You know, they're the people that have to tell you what's going on. That's when he learns that you know six people have died, two from the crew and four from passengers. And um, Charlie is not able to brief him on who, who from the crew has passed away. And so that happens kind of the next day. You meet uh, the Ben Chittle, I think. What's his name? Don John Ch Chittle. Definitely recognize him from a lot of movies. He's a, he's a lawyer, Hugh Lang. And pretty quickly you get into, you know, they've taken blood samples. And Hugh Lang, um, I don't know why I don't have him up there, but he is the... He is the criminal defense attorney for Whit Whitaker. You know, he's facing, um, you know, up to six counts of manslaughter, and so he could go to could, could go to prison for life. And so, um, they also have like the basically kind of like the politics of it is it's both in the, the union's favor for the airline and both uh, Whip to get defended properly. So they kind of they're just aligned. So you have another meeting where like the airline is you know top minor characters with lawyers talking about their exposure and their financial liability and whatnot. And so you meet um, you meet kind of my favorite character in this one was Abington Carr. Whip has a, a friend slash drug dealer who's kind of just, you know, he just, he just bodacious, just a big, big, big characterization that I thought was fun. And so he he comes over and drives um well Whip has Whip meets Nicole in the hospital. That's when their two um, two character lines converge, and they also meet another cancer patient. So I don't know, 10, 15 minute scene of the cancer patient just talking about you know life and whatnot. And so Whip and is basically like, hey Nicole, I'll come visit you when when we get out. And so he gets the address, and it, they kind of go their separate ways for now. And so Abington Carr drives Whip home. Um, you know, I mean, just some, some funny lines out, out of him. But he gets back, he goes to his father's farm, he can't go to his condo because he's being hailed as a hero while simultaneously knowing that he's got a bunch of financial and legal liability, um, criminal liability as well behind the scenes. And so he gets back to his, his house or his place and he decides to dump out all of the alcohol. And so he dumps all the alcohol out, um, and then something else happens and he quickly starts boozing really quickly again. And so regardless, um, he's drinking and driving and he decides to go check on Nicole. And so he sees her like packing up her stuff and he goes to follow her you know, to say, hey, you know, be friendly. And the landlord that was bugging Nicole at the beginning is now, is now intimidating with her bat. Nicole's trying to move out and he gets, he's, she still owes $1,100 in damages or whatever. And so Whip um, de-escalates the situation, pays off the landlord $400, Nicole is free, and Whip invites Nicole to stay with him. So they go back to his place, again, I guess it's like his father or grandfather's farm that he seldom been able to sell, and um, yeah, and so they, they quickly uh, do some coitusing as well. Um, the next morning when they wake up, Nicole's naked in the bed, um, and Whip is, you know, taking his morning coffee or whatever, and he's pretty much drinking the whole movie. But regardless, they have to have some more, um, just more meetings with the lawyers, the, the Hugh Lang and uh, Charlie Anderson. And so Hugh Lang is going to try to get the toxicology report thrown away because they have, you know, they had to have their machines calibrated, this and that, where it's, you know, it has re reasonable doubt to be inadmissible in court. And so, Whip is, you know, he kind of, he wants to kind of like run away with Nicole. He wants, you know, he has this old kind of like a small, it's just a small single engine plane or whatever. I don't know plane specifications. Um, 
but regardless that happens um, and he's, he kind of goes they go to the funeral of uh, Katarina um, Whip asks Margaret like you know Margaret knows uh, Whip's behavior and Whip's like hey man like what are you going to tell this, this investigation for so they kind of a back and forth and Margaret kind of agrees to go with him um, Nicole makes Whip go to an AA meeting um, and he quickly lets himself out of that um, goes back home gets extremely intoxicated Nicole comes back and like you know puts a pillow under his head and a blanket on him he's just like crashed out on the floor and so he wakes up in the morning and starts I think starts drinking again um, but some minor scenes go by and then Nicole comes back one day she gets a job at a supermarket and she approaches Whip who is um, working on the plane and he's got coke out as long, along with alcohol and Nicole's you know has a heroin addiction she's trying to you know stay away from people using anything so they kind of have a fight. Um, Whip screams at her and is like, you know, I've never had to suck dick to get high or whatever. And so they kind of lose their relationship and definitely go through some struggle. They kind of are still kind of friendly even after that initial fight. But Nicole leaves him a note and, and takes off and has someone from the AA group um, take her somewhere else to live. So their, their relationship is short-lived. Um, but now he has another meeting with... Um, Oh, I don't know, some cramps. Uh, meeting with uh, Charlie and with Hugh Lang. And so they're going over, Hugh Lang being you know, excited that he got the toxicity report thrown out during this big hangar where the um, airplane is being investigated. And they did find that the reason it really dove was because like one of the tail, tail fins or wings or whatever you call them um, got locked into some position that forced them to go into a nose dive. And so regardless, even though they got the toxicity report thrown out, um, they, they found the three empty single-shot vodka bottles in, in the cockpit or in the, the crew's quarters. And so they're going, and again, Whip tells the truth to his friend Charlie and to his lawyer. Um, but he, gets, he kind of blows up at him and is just like goes off on them and is, is not too happy. And so now they have this meeting coming up. Um, Whip goes, he then goes to his, uh, uh, to his ex-wife. He's got an ex-wife and a son. And so his, his son, Will Whitaker Jr., is there. Right when Whip shows up, he, you know, he's already drunk. And so he starts, the, the ex-wife is like, you know, get out, leave him to call the police. Um, the son is like, you know, you, you made my mother upset, you know, get out of here. And so Whip kind of like, you know, like aggressively play hugs him. Um, and then they call the police, and then he, he, you know, voluntarily kind of decides to leave. And when he goes outside, there's a bunch of reporters and the police as well. So he gets escorted out um, from from the ex-wife's house by the police, and is kind of you know not not a huge deal. But the next kind of big thing and resolution to the plot is that he has to have this test testify in in front of this regulatory board. And so he goes and stays at Charlie Anderson's house. He makes it eight or nine days without drinking anything, and then they have to you know get ready for the next day for the for the testimony. And so they check him into a hotel. And so the hotel mini bar has been changed to have no alcohol in it, but it's, it's got an adjoining room. And so in the middle of the night, he kind of hears, like it sounds like someone knocking at the door, but it's really someone had left the deadbolt um, engaged without actually closing the door, so the door didn't close completely. And so just kind of like banging in, in the door is open. And so Whip goes in there and sees the mini bar in this room is fully loaded with alcohol. And so he just unloads. <laughs> and so the next morning they have a security guard outside his door to make sure he can't uh, leave or nobody comes in. Um, Charlie and uh, Hugh go up there and they knock on the door. They got coffee, they're all ready to go. And he doesn't answer the door. And so they, they scan the key card to come in and they just see the bottles and partying and stuff everywhere. And so Whip is crashed out on the bathroom floor. They're not sure if he's dead for a brief second, but he's just fallen and hit his head. And so he's got this meeting in an hour, 45 minutes. And so he's got to do his best to sober up or do whatever. And so he calls in his, his big homie, Arvington Carr, who comes in to save the day. <laughs> he brings him some Coke and, uh, um, uh, what is he? He calls it, he calls it, I, I, don't, I don't know, this is, uh, as someone who's well, well versed in drug terminology, I didn't forget what I forget what he called it. It's like, he like, took out the tip of a cigarette and put some cocaine in there, which I don't know how, how effective smoking free base cocaine would be. And then again, I've never done a cocaine. I can't fuck can't can't tolerate coffee. <laughs> but regardless, they try to get him just to his baseline so he can he can pull through and, and appear fine at the meeting. 
And so they do that. He goes down there, um, you know, puts on a nice suit. And so he starts getting interrogated by another minor character, just the lady running the uh, review and investigation. And he gets through all the questioning, and he, he's getting through all the questioning fine. And so basically the resolution of the movie is he gets down to one final question where Katarina, you know, his ex-lover, um, has passed away. And the only two toxicity reports that had anyone consuming alcohol was Katarina and Whip. And Whip's had gotten dismissed on a tech technical reason. And so Whip basically just has to have one more lie and say that it was Katarina who drank, drank the, the vodka and he would be clean and clear to go. And so basically that's the big resolution of the movie is his moral character changes. He agrees. He's like, you know, Katarina, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to diss the dead and put it on Katarina. It was me who did it. And I'm, you know, I'm drunk right now. I drank up every day before because they asked him like four days leading up to this, were you drinking excessively? And so basically he just comes clean to all of it. So, you know, there's big gas. It's not, it's not a courtroom, it's just like a testimony area. Kind of like being sworn under oath and testifying before Congress as opposed to being in a courtroom. But regardless, that's his big development is he admits to his faults and he finally stops lying. And so he gets taken to jail, I don't know, he gets five, six years. He is giving, um, just kind of telling a story to another group of inmates. And he has this little cell with, you know, the different pictures of Nicole and of his family. And so the final thing of the movie, the final scene of the movie is he gets a visitor and it's his son, Will Whitaker Jr. You know, they kind of embrace and hug. And Will's like, you know, I have to write an essay for college. And it's the most, the title of the essay is the most, uh, interesting person that I've never really met. And so basically, you know, Whip is going to now finally stop lying and come clean and have a relationship with his son. So overall, again, I enjoyed it as entertainment. Nothing super novel, but again, I'm a fan of Denzel Washington, and I thought the script was decent. So overall, lower end of entertaining. I do recommend it. If you've made it to this point in the movie, you've basically made the whole movie. But thank you for my watching my review of Flight, and I will see you on the next one.